It says you're live. All right. <laughs> I think we're live now. Hello, everyone. My name is Kayla Cox. And if you don't know who I am, uh, I am the founder of this channel, Six Miles to Supper. I've lost 80 pounds uh, and kept it off using intermittent fasting, uh, mostly OMAD, which is one meal a day, uh, eating one meal a day. Uh, and I walk six miles every day. I've written a book called uh, The Laid Back Guide to Intermittent Fasting, and that's available on Amazon. I also do the Six Miles to Supper podcast. Cast, and that's a little bit different than this channel. Um, it's more, it's a, a lot of times it's a little bit longer form. Uh, I go into a little bit more depth on different topics uh, regarding weight loss. And I'm also the founder of uh, Slow and Steady Success Academy. So if you need to learn how to lose weight and keep it off sustainably, uh, that's a really good resource. Um, I'm the instructor in there. I've created courses. I'm continuing to create courses. Uh, and we also have a uh, private members only Facebook group uh, where I do a group coaching call, um, a group coaching Facebook live uh, every week uh, if you get your all access pass, which is a basically a subscription to the all the courses and that Facebook group. So uh, let's get started with some questions. Thank you to my husband, JR. He is in here uh, in the chat at Six Miles to Supper and he'll be moderating comments and uh, feeding me questions as they're um, being asked. So if you have questions that you'd like me to answer, please put them in the chat and we'll try to get them answered tonight. So um, first of all, uh, let's go to our, uh, and thank you, Jay, for doing that. Okay. So Sue McPherson has the first question. She was on the YouTube community tab and she asked, um, I have been having trouble with snacking at night when depressed. When I'm feeling down, I just stop caring. Any advice? And uh, yeah, I, I think that we all kind of had that tendency, um, or at least I know I certainly did a lot of emotional eating. I never even really realized the extent to which I was doing that until I started doing intermittent fasting. And it really started to show me like, wow, I mean, so many times I ate because I thought I was just hungry, but really it was because I was sad or, you know, or, you know, feeling depressed or, you know, just being stressed out, whatever. So, um, I think you, you hit on something. You said you just stopped caring. So I would say when, when it comes to weight loss in general, it's important to know your why and, and, and to get as deep with that as you possibly can, like really dig in and figure out why do you want to lose weight in the first place? Like, are we talking right now? Like, Maybe you're at a good weight. I mean, I don't know. You, you didn't mention, you know, like how much do you have to lose or or what? Like if you're at a good weight, you know, maybe it's that you're saying like, I'm at a good weight and I want to have a snack right now. But uh, and, and that could be it. But um, if you are really wanting to uh, lose weight and this is like the thing that you're doing, you know, it's kind of like self-sabotage, right? Like you're like, I, I need to lose weight. I want to lose weight, but I'm, I'm not doing the thing. Like I'm, you know, snacking at night. I just get sad. You got to focus on your why you have to just say, I, I'm, I'm changing this, you know, and you have to get that self-discipline to just say, I'm not doing this. And here is why, like, if you can tell yourself why, like name off the reasons, because I want to be able to, you know, keep up with my kids. Like here, here are some things that helped me. Like I, I realized that I was starting to hold myself back in life because I was getting physically too big. Like when I laid down, it was hard for me to breathe. Uh, I was just noticing myself not wanting to get up and interact with my kids and, uh, you know, feeling really tired all the time. And I wanted to change that. And so that was, that. those were those things that helped me in those times where it's like, you're tired and, and you're maybe you're upset or something to not pick up the cookie and instead say, no, I'm going to do something else, anything else besides eat right now. So, you know, like uh, a lot of times when I, when I feel like, and, I, and I've dealt somewhat with um, not depression, I, I don't think I've ever been clinically depressed, but um, I have certainly had down times and uh, uh, certainly like sometimes with my cycle, uh, I think I've kind of experienced like some PMDD type symptoms, um, that's uh, pre uh, sorry, pre menstrual dysphoric disorder, but it's basically kind of like a little depression you experience. Um, and what has helped me the most, a couple of things. One is journaling, writing down what's bothering me, figuring it out, uh, 
really like writing it all out, figuring out what's my thought process, what's really going on, talking it out, learning how to talk it out with my husband and just say, I know this is, you know, like a lot of times I'll preface it by saying, I know this, this like doesn't make any sense, or I know that this is a silly thing to worry about, or I know that this is like, I'm blowing this out of proportion, but I need to just like get it all out and talking it out. Um, and then also, you know, um, you know, when you get to those issues now, also, if you're actually like clinically depressed, in other words, this is like a deep seated thing, then I would say seek counseling, you know, get, get help, seek out help. Um, but, uh, but really the things that have really helped me the most are, and then also filling up your life with a lot of things like, you know, searching for meaning in your life. Like, what are you put on this earth to do? And, um, and I think if you, if you do those things, hopefully that will help you. But ultimately it comes down to telling yourself, no, I'm just not going to do this. Like I'm, I'm stronger than this. I can choose right now to not eat and I'm not going to eat. Um, Amy, uh, sorry, Amira Asmi said, uh, if you please, I want to know what uh, do you eat now for maintaining your weight and how many meals? Uh, so uh, Amira, I eat, well, okay, so I prefer to just continue to eat OMAD. I would say uh, this past week, for example, I think I've done OMAD every single day, uh, pro probably for the past seven days, aside from Sunday, which I always take off. Uh, I've just done OMAD. Nope. No, I lied. There was one day where we did go get pizza. We were uh, in Augusta. So we went and had pizza. So I had lunch and supper that day. Um, uh, but I am in maintenance mode. So to me, maintenance mode is great. It's very, it's a time of a lot more freedom, uh, which uh, is, you know, it's just more loosey goosey. You can be more loosey goosey with it. Um, I find that I just prefer OMAD just as a way of life. Like I like the not having to think about food until supper time. I just like having my coffee during the day and then have supper at night. The food tastes better. That's probably one of my favorite parts of it is the, the food tastes so much better if it's just once a day. Um, and so, uh, so generally I'm just still doing one meal, but I would say there are occasions where I'll do two. Um, I don't, I don't tend to ever want to have like, three meals. Even if I did, like, I, I can't remember the last time I've done it, but um, probably back in January. So for a while there, I would do like breakfast and then usually supper, you know, like something like that. Like I, I usually don't like to do three meals. Um, but uh, my main thing is to continue to weigh um, every day. And I keep track of my seven day average. And my goal is to maintain within like a five pound range in my seven day average. Okay. So, uh, that's just how I do it. It's a completely arbitrary number, but, uh, that's what I do. Uh, and, and what do I eat? I always eat everything. So whatever I want, I eat all the food. <laughs> like I'm not low carb. I've never been low carb. Uh, I never restricted foods while I was losing so that maintenance would be very much like it is right now, where it's like, I, I don't have to change things cause it's just already I'm eating everything. So, um, Bobby King asked, um, uh, I'm, fa uh, I'm fairly new to your channel, but I loved your videos and advice. Well, thank you. Uh, I just started OMAD and I find I am very tired all day long. I'm wondering, is this normal? I'm telling myself it's just an adjustment period and I will feel more alert soon. And so, yes. So first of all, there is an adjustment period with OMAD. Now I didn't go so drastic. It sounds like maybe you went from eating regularly down to OMAD, which I feel like would be a really big adjustment. I, I mean, even, even when you can mentally just say, wow, I'm doing something really different. And so this is going to be really uncomfortable for a while. Even if you can get past that, you, you know, phys, like physically, you're going to probably have an adjustment period. And a lot of people do uh, have issues with hunger, uh, but it sounds like your main thing is just, you know, feeling kind of tired. So um, I think you will, if that's like your main complaint right now is you're just feeling tired, I would say that's probably going to, I would say within a couple of weeks, um, kind of wear off. And, and I think you'll find that you adjust to it. Um, mo most everything I would say, just, um, give, give it a, a couple of weeks at least, uh, before you really expect your body to be like fully on board with this. Uh, I, I always like to 
tell people to go as gradually with it as they possibly can, because there's just so much less stress with it. It's just, you know, it, it's really easy to um, get used to. When you do something kind of drastic, it, there's more of an adjustment and it can feel harder than if you went with it gradually, if that makes sense. But it sounds like you're doing great. So yeah, I think just give yourself some more time. Give yourself some rest too. Hey, you know, you feel tired? Give yourself some rest. Always give your body what it wants. Uh, hey, thanks for the super chat. Your long weight loss. Um, I don't usually do OMAD, but I found your channel very inspiring. Oh, let's see. Oh, let's see. That wasn't. Uh, yeah, there's no question. Oh, there's no question. There's nice oh, well, thank you. Yeah. So I found your channel very inspiring, especially like your focus on celebrating slow and steady progress and thinking about how even small victories add up in the long run. Well, thank you very much. And it is, it's, it is so important to focus on the slow and steady progress towards your goal. And then just, just always pile up those little victories. That, that is, that's great. So I'm glad you enjoyed the channel. Thank you. Um, Brandy Smith, I went off my diet while on vacation and now I can't seem to be get motivated to start back. Fasting feels like punishment and I'm craving sweets. I'm so worried I'll put the weight back on that I've lost. Any advice? Well, yes, I have some uh, that I hope will be helpful. Um, first of all, you know, when you get back from vacation, it, it's like, you know, life's, you know, you're back into normal everyday life and it's an adjustment. And so first of all, be patient with yourself and say, okay, this is to be expected. It's kind of like, you know, you come home, everybody's trying to get back in the routine and, and you just kind of need an adjustment. Um, now fasting feels like a punishment and you're craving sweets. So I always let myself have sweets whenever I want them. And that has counterintuitively made it so that like, I just don't crave sweets that often. I mean, I used to be the type, like I always wanted something sweet, always, always, always. And then when I finally told myself, like, you can have as much sweet stuff as you want and you can have it whenever you want. It's like now I can just like, I'm like, eh, nah, I don't really care about having that, you know? And I just, I've gained so much, like, it's not even willpower. I would just say like, it's just not a thing with me anymore, which is so weird. Um, so I'm wondering, because you said you're craving sweets, but it sounds like maybe you're not allowing yourself sweets. I would say, you know, uh, just let yourself eat sweets during, you know, during the time where your, you know, your eating window is. Um, now, another thing, fasting feels like punishment. So also going back to start out slow, start with what feels easy. Like just say, you know, like, even if it's like eight hours of fasting, just say, I'm going to just not eat for eight hours during, you know, this time period. Okay. That means you could sleep through it and then just say, okay, I'm going to push breakfast just a little bit later and then just work your way back to wherever you were, where you were having success. Cause you were having success. I'll remind you of that, right? Like, remember, like you were losing weight. So you know how to lose weight. You're just needing to get back to that. And I think what happens too often is like, we have these like, well, I was here before. Well, but now you're not, right? You weren't, you're not used to that anymore. So you got to get back to that place. Just be patient and, and go with it gradually. And, and also, you know, another thing I think that you could explore is the whole punishment uh, aspect of it. Like, do you not like fasting? Like, I, I mean, and that's okay. Like, if you don't like it, then don't do it. Like, there are so many excellent ways to lose weight. And, and intermittent fasting, I think, is an excellent tool for a lot of people, but it's not for everybody. Um, you know, my husband, and he's a skinny guy, but he does not do well with intermittent fasting. It would not be a good idea for him to try to be, like, for this to be the way he would try to lose weight. No, it's like, he just doesn't do well. I do great with it. But so the point is, if like, if you're feeling like you're white knuckling this, like I would stop, I would just say, okay, uh, this hasn't worked, but I'm going to figure out the thing that works. I like, don't just like throw up your hands and give up completely. Just try to say, okay, what is it that I don't like about it? I mean, is it maybe that you are, you're doing intermittent fasting plus you're saying no sweets. So maybe instead you could just say intermittent fasting and I'll allow myself the sweets whenever I want them. That's one option. Uh, having a shorter fasting window is another one. That way you have, you know, just, you know, it's more like a regular schedule, um, you know, or you could, you could just try three meals a day and say no snacking and just try that as your plan. You know, there's a lot of different things you can do, but you will find it. And there, you just have to find that thing that works for you, that thing that you can stick with and not feel like 
resentful of or like, you know, like it's a punishment. So hopefully that helps you. Uh, but you, you can do it. Um, okay. Wendy Hotchalter said, how do you keep focused on OMAD when you have to prepare meals for your family, including kids requests all day long? This has been a challenge for me. Thank you for, thank you in advance. Um, uh, well, I'm glad that my channel has helped you start OMAD. Okay. So, um, I think you said it in the question. You just stay focused on one meal a day for yourself. And, and um, this again goes back to, I went really gradually with it. So it was pretty easy for me because I just got slowly used to the idea of like, I'm not eating right now. Like, you know, my breakfast, maybe my kids eat early, but I'm going to eat breakfast later. And then eventually it was like, well, I don't eat breakfast. I'll have lunch. And then it was like, oh, well, I don't have breakfast or lunch. I have like a late lunch, you know? And then, um, so it was so gradual for me, you know, that that's, that's how it was easy. But, um, it just became a, I don't eat right now for me. Like it was just, I don't eat right now. This is my rule. And I was really good about sticking with my rule. But again, I went so gradually with it. And that's why I think I was able to be so consistent with it. When I really got clear on it, it was like, I just know this is what I'm doing and I'm not eating right now. So I'm just not eating. Like, you know, you in order to eat, you have to like pick up the food and put it in your mouth. So I would just say, I'm not doing that. And so uh, that was my strategy. So uh, it is, but it, also though, give yourself uh, the like grace to just be bad at it at first and to realize like you're going to slip up, you know, I, I mean, you know, this, this would happen to me too. Like you, you're, you know, making the thing and you pop something in your mouth. It's like, Oh, <laughs> like, you know, you just forget and that's okay. Just don't beat yourself up and say, I'm going to try to do better tomorrow and just try to get a little bit better at it each day. And, and eventually it will be no, like no problem. No big Dana. I was wondering how long was it that you had sugar in your coffee before you decided to cut out your sugar? And did you notice a difference in your weight loss or was it the same regardless of if you, if you had sugar or not? Okay. So, um, I used to have a tablespoon of sugar <laughs> in my coffee for those of you who don't know. Um, and I loved, oh, I loved sugary drinks, like a cup and a half of sugar in our gallon of sweet tea. I loved Cokes and, 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 uh, uh, like that. I mean, sorry, Dr. Peppers, I hate diet Cokes and stuff, but, um, I decided to cut out sugar and here's why uh, cut out sugar in my coffee. And here's why I didn't cut out like all sugar. I just wanted to cut out the sugar in my coffee. And here's why I knew like, even though I was allowing myself sugar in the coffee, I really didn't want to have other sugary drinks that I was going to allow myself. So I felt like I'll allow myself sugar in the coffee, but I'm not going to sit here and have Cokes all day. Like I knew that was a bad plan. <laughs> you know, that wouldn't work. So um, I thought, hey, but if I could figure out how to like um, unsweetened tea and, um, you know, like things like LaCroix, those unsweetened uh, flavored uh, uh, waters, yeah, unsweetened flavored waters. Uh, then I could have so much variety in my fasting window. And I really felt like if I could get the fasting window to feel like no big deal at all, like if you feel hungry, you can still, you know, have coffee and you can still have a LaCroix and you can still have unsweet tea. Like I felt like if I could do that, then man, that would make intermittent fasting so easy. Um, so that's what I did. I thought, okay, first I got to learn how to not uh, like have co uh, my coffee with sugar. I allowed the half and half, but took out sugar. And I did that very, very gradually. I didn't notice a difference one way or the other. I was having success with the sugar in my coffee and I went so gradually with it. And during that time, cause that was back in 2015 and I was, uh, like still, uh, doing CrossFit sometimes during that time I was doing powerlifting. So there's a lot of variables there, uh, that I can't really say with certainty, like, yes, I know difference. I don't, I quite, um, but it was really more about the bigger picture stuff for me. Um, and I would say, you know, you can do it like I did it. You can say, well, I'll have my sugar <laughs> in my coffee at first, and then just, you know, if you want to slowly wean off of it, or, you know, if you, if you want to be the type and just say, Hey, I want to learn how to do all this and keep the sugar in my coffee. 
I fully support that and just, you know, keep working with it and being really consistent other with everything else and say, I'm going to be very, very consistent with my fasting um, and, and have, I'll have the sugar in my coffee, but otherwise I'm going to have, you know, no foods and stuff like that during the fasting with see what your results are and then and then report back to me because i would love to know <laughs> uh, i love it when people run experiments so uh joey harrington says does intermittent fasting only work if i'm doing it the same all the time example only a 16a or uh, only a 12 12 so in other words can you like sometimes do an 18 6 and sometimes do a 12 12 and is that going to affect it well a lot of people have found they do great with, you know, like keeping it, you know, basically really flexible and saying, well, sometimes I'm going to do a 12, 12 and other times I'm going to do an 18, six. And, um, I like to keep things easy on myself. I just enjoyed it. Like just saying, okay, I know every day I'm eating between the hours of this and, you know, 12 and eight or, or whatever the things were. But if your life dictates that the only way intermittent fasting is really going to work for you is to say, well, some days it's going to be a shorter window and some days it's going to be a longer window. I say you're going to be fine. Um, I think what where most people find their trouble is, is they kind of just never do the fasting. Like they, they get so kind of like confused about what they're supposed to be doing. And it becomes so uh, like confusing as far as like trying to calculate things. They just kind of throw their hands up and say, I don't really, it does. It didn't really work. Um, so I would say do what you can and just be as consistent as you can with whatever you're choosing to do and see what your results are. Um, because again, a lot of people have, I mean, like my, my um, brother-in-law, Roger Cox, he has to do very different windows all the time and he had really good success. So uh, hopefully that helps you. Brenda Dorisk asked, uh, when you started fasting eight or 10 hours, did you lose weight during the small steps you made or was it not until you had a 16-8? Yes, I did have some success, but here's the thing. Again, I was doing, you know, really hard workouts, um, things like, uh, you know, powerlifting, CrossFit. Um, uh, I was, um, yeah, I, I was, there were, there were some, sometimes I was trying to count calories. Um, and it was just like, I was not being consistent in 2015. That's back in 2015. My big problem was consistency. When I was consistent with it, I was losing like a pound a week. When I was not, con but I thought a pound a week was failure, you know? <laughs> so I thought, well, that's not good. So I've got to figure out the thing that's going to make me lose five pounds a week, you know, or at least three or four pounds a week, right? And so uh, I look on that and I think, oh man, if I had just been consistent and just stuck with it and just, you know, kept my head down and just been consistent with the fasting, I would have had that weight off probably in 2015, but you, you know, you learn, <laughs> you live and you learn. Um, but some people do find, and I would say for, for you, Brenda, like start out and just, you know, go with what you can do consistently and focus on just being consistent with your window and then slowly work your way out and keep noticing your results. And when you hit that, that moment where you say, okay, this really stops working. And then, and then you can make a little tweak, but, um, I was just in a hurry. That was, that was my main problem. Um, okay. So seven, two, five, eight, zero, Mary said, Oh, mad and taking medications instructions, uh, to say to take twice a day with food, what to do. Okay. So first of all, I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on the internet. So I can only tell you though, what I've heard other people doing. Um, you could talk to your doctor and I would say, certainly talk with your doctor when you're, when you're trying to do medication and fasting and all that stuff. But, uh, some people have said that they've done just, you know, drink it with some milk and that has helped, you know, like with the stomach. Cause a lot of times it's like, like a stomach thing. Like you don't want to get an upset stomach. Um, and I know some people will be like, oh, well, it's got calories. Well, you know, basically I, I think it's fine. Uh, I think you can run it as an experiment and then just see what your results are. Um, but you know, a little bit of milk or something, I don't think is going to be enough to really affect your results. And I'm always focused on results. I don't really care about, does it technically break your fast? Like, you know, for a little while, if right after you've had the milk, I'm more concerned with just overall big picture. Did you not eat during the fasting window? Okay. So, um, but anyway, talk to your doctor too, or, or, you know, like if they say, well, you really need to eat something, then, you know, allow yourself a small snack and, you know, and then just be really consistent otherwise with, with your fasting. Um, uh, and I would just say, you know, you can figure something out 
uh, and and you'll do fine. But the main thing is to take your medicine, <laughs> you know, right? So take care of yourself and, and you'll do good. Okay, uh, Instagram, uh, you can follow me on Instagram if you'd like. It's really more of a personal account, but uh, my handle is Kayla M. Cox, M as in Marie. Um, and so Peter uh, Bixton said, uh, do you think half and half helps you get through the fasting window? Uh, I've been thinking of trying, uh, a bit afraid it will trigger my cravings for sweets. Uh, do you get cravings from half and half? I don't. Um, in fact, I think if anything, it, it really helps to keep me feeling full. Uh, so many times, especially in the early, early days. Now, nowadays it doesn't happen very often. Occasionally it will. Like if I just randomly didn't eat enough the night before at my OMAD, then like sometimes around eh, two or two o'clock or so, I'll be like, mm, kind of feeling hungry right now. I'll have my coffee with half and half and I'm like, I'm good until until supper time. So uh, I haven't noticed having any kind of cravings for sweets. He asked also, do you use any supplements? Is there any supplement you would recommend that assists with OMAD? I don't use any supplements at all. Um, I, I'm sure at some points I've taken like a multivitamin. I just don't do it. I, 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 I researched a good bit about multivitamins specifically. And after reading all up on it, I just decided and not to be taken one. So, uh, but again, not a doctor. That's just my own personal thing. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, your long weight loss. That is awesome for the super chat. Thank you. Um, I'm curious how you endured uh, long-term. Did you use social pressure to your benefit, like a support group, a shared goal with someone, or was it all internally motivated? Um, uh, persistence is tough. Okay. So persistence is tough. Um, I did not use social pressure <laughs> to my benefit. I am an introvert. I am, oh, I am such an introvert. I told no one <laughs> really. I mean, I like even my husband, apparently <laughs> like we talk, we talk about this now because at the time, you know, um, I had struggled with weight my entire life. Like the entire time when I was growing up, I was always either on a diet or, or, you know, overweight or, uh, or in the process of gaining the weight back. And it was always a struggle when, uh, when I went to college though, I had actually gotten down, uh, to a good weight. And, and like for that little period of time in my life, I was at a good weight and, um, it was fantastic. It felt great. Um, and that's when I met my husband. And then, uh, so like we met, you know, he sees me, you know, just knowing me as that, you know, like a, a normal weight. And then, um, after we got married, like he was in the Marine Corps. So I put on a little bit of weight and then, uh, once we started, um, our family, then I really started, I mean, I put on like 60 pounds or so with my first pregnancy. And so, um, so the point is I felt embarrassed that like, I had put on weight um, because I felt like, man, you know, he, he met me as somebody at like a good weight and he didn't really know, or, I mean, he, I'm sure he, I had told him like, I'd always struggled with my weight, but the point is he knew me as like, met me as a person who was a normal weight, but the truth was I was normally overweight. So then I kind of felt bad. Like, and then, you know, again, like with every pregnancy, I put on more weight. And then after uh, the third, uh, baby came along, I ended up like, you know, pretty much putting on weight, like more weight than I had weighed when, uh, when I was delivering, uh, our third. So, um, so that was not good. Right. Because, uh, by that time, I think our, our youngest, uh, like in 2015, when I finally got on the scale, uh, he would have been, uh, two and a half, almost three. So I, you know, I had, it wasn't just like right after the baby was born, I had, I was up there. I was like, you know, staying up there. So, um, so then, so because of that, that, that kind of like, I didn't really want to talk about it with anybody and I'm an introvert. So it was just like, I just like kept it to myself. I was just determined to, to do it and to get it off. Um, I, I researched a lot on the internet. I didn't have any kind of support group at all. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I even, I don't even think my husband <laughs> really understood that I was losing as much weight as I was until, Jay, when was it that you said that you finally realized? When you started the 
yeah. when I started the YouTube channel. <laughs> so like, uh, so which shows you, you know, you think everybody's paying so much attention to you. They're not, you know. Um, uh, but when I started this YouTube channel, I had lost 65 pounds. And at that point, he started to understand like, oh, so you, you know, like you've been doing this intermittent fasting. Not that I was trying to uh, hide it from him. I just didn't talk about it. And uh, everybody's, you know, got their own lives and they're going about their business and, and doing their own thing. So, uh, so it was very much internally motivated. And that's, uh, I am I'm just an internally motivated person. Um, that's just how I'm built. Um, and um, I'm actually really glad um, that I, that I didn't like put that pressure on myself to like tell other people about it. like, again, cause I'm an introvert. So like I do better when it's just like me, like I got to figure out for me, why do I want to do this? And like, like, you know, how am I going to do this? And I just motivate myself. I learned a lot about myself during this whole journey. Um, uh, and it also helped because I eventually realized like, I'm the only one, like if I don't tell anybody, like nobody knows like how fast or how slow I'm losing. And that really helped me because in 2016, um, um, really in the beginning, uh, end of 2015, beginning of 2016, I was like almost ready to quit. I was like, this is taking too long. I'm a failed, I'm a failure at weight loss. Like I'm just going to have to reconcile with being, you know, overweight. And uh, I just said to myself, you know, like, nobody really knows that I'm even losing weight. Like I had lost about 20 pounds and I was really about 15 pounds down because I started to regain. And I thought, you know, nobody's even been saying to me like, Hey, you've lost weight. And so I thought nobody really knows. So I can just kind of like be in my own little world and just lose the weight. And, you know, and that's what happened. Eventually people started to notice and started to say, Hey, wow, you've you know, lost some weight. Um, and that ended up being encouraging. But it was like, like by that point, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't need the encouragement. And that was something I had to learn how to deal with was like the fact that nobody was noticing my weight loss. Like I took offense to that at first. I was just like, man, you know, like I, I thought they were insulting me in a way or like trying to tell me, like trying to like pressure me into losing more weight. Like you don't deserve congratulations yet, which is so bizarre that that's where my mind was. But, you know, so, uh, but yeah, just, getting really deep with my why, like, why do I want to do this? Why am I putting myself through this? Like, why am I changing myself? Change is hard. Change is painful. Uh, but that's what I did. I just kept focusing on my why and my own internal motivation. And so, uh, hopefully that, that helps you. Um, Eli Bomilo, uh, says, hi, Kayla. My name is Olga. My question is about plateaus. Uh, I'm currently at a plateau and maybe even gaining a little. Am I being consistent? Yes. Uh, I do follow the same plan I started with, which is about an 18.6. I don't eat, so I eat outside my eating window. I can notice my little imperfections, whether it is snacking between meals or eating too much dessert. The point is I was never perfect before and the plan worked for me. It looks like my body figured out it's losing weight, and now it tricks me into eating more than I should. Have you experienced the same? My seven-day average is about a pound higher than it was a month ago, and I'm frustrated. Uh, I am at a normal BMI. Just want to drop a few pounds that I don't like. I was losing about one or one and a half pounds a week before I hit the plateau. Thank you for your channel. Well, uh, you're welcome, and so this is a really good question, and, you know, plateaus are rough. They just are. They're frustrating. Um, you didn't say exactly how long you've been plateaued. You did say that your average is about um, uh, a pound, like your seven day average is about a pound higher than it was a month ago. So first of all, you're maintaining really well. <laughs> like if, if that's the only change, that means, then you're doing really good sticking in that area and you are at a normal BMI. Now, can you lose more? It sounds to me now, I mean, now, if you've only if this has only been going on for like, let's say four weeks, I would say give it another good four weeks of consistency and then then say, OK, let's sit down with and look at the numbers and see. And if you're still just kind of maintaining because the one pound I would not worry about, first of all, at all, like when you're maintaining, I say try to keep it within a five pound 
range of, of your seven day average. So like, let's say you're at 140, you know, 140 to 145 uh, or, or whatever, you know, um, once I got into the normal range, my weight loss was so slow. It was like a third of a pound a week. And that was being really consistent with OMAD. So um, that was, you know, a, you know, uh, pretty slow. I would say it, there were a lot of times where it kind of seemed like, Oh, I'm not going to lose anymore. But then it would, sure enough, it would start back down. So um, I would say, uh, like, your body's not tricking you. <laughs> like, it just, that that's one thing I think to, to don't, don't like overthink this and, and don't start to obsess to, to say, I'm not going to set, like, just make a rule. It, because it sounds like, uh, and you also said, like, uh, you said, you know, you're saying to yourself, well, I'm at a normal weight. Why? I mean, my video on Monday about like how to know when to stop we run into is like, because when you hit your goal weight or, or you get down into a normal weight, your body still isn't going to be perfect. I mean, your body's never going to be perfect. You're always going to have little imperfections. And, and then you have to decide, you know, is it something that you can change or is it something you really can't change? And even if you can change it, are you willing to change it? Because if you if you uh, if you really if it's really important to you to get down those pounds, like you, you got to get them off, then you're probably going to have to make your plan a little harder. You're going to have to restrict more. And can you do that over the long term? Like, so can you maintain that for the rest of your life? Can you keep doing that thing that's going to get you down to that point? Um, those are some questions to ask yourself. Um, and it's like what sometimes happens, uh, and this happened with me, uh, like you kind of get a number stuck in your head, like, oh, I need to get down to, let's say, 130. Because, you know, maybe you heard other people say, well, you know, they wanted to get down to 130. And, and then that becomes your goal. But that's not a really good reason for that to be your goal. And now you said you do have some pounds you don't like. Um, but, you know, you could also explore, is it more a question of, well, you know, it's not so much the weight, it's just, you know, you want to try to tone up some, right? So then you can maybe do some exercises or something like that instead of just trying to get down to a lower number arbitrarily, if that makes sense. Um, but, you know, I would say when you're down at a normal BMI, take the very, very, very long view look, you know, and, and be really consistent and just don't, don't worry about that one pound fluctuation up. That's, that's like nothing to be worried about. Um, I would just say, focus on consistency, make those little, little changes, like, you know, kind of work on the dessert and the snacking thing that you're talking about. Um, and then, and just see, you know, be very, very patient though, because those last pounds are really, really slow, but I think you'll do fine. Um, uh, Emmy renewing my life said, I have two questions. Uh, one, how do you actually walk inside your home? <laughs> do you march on spot or do you have a huge house? Well, uh, actually neither of those was true. Uh, the first house that I did house walking in, I think was like 1400 square feet. And, um, yeah, 1400 square feet. Uh, the next one was an, about that. And then the next one, uh, we moved a lot, <laughs> was about 1,900 square feet. Now, though, I am in a Class C RV and we full-time RV. And there are times when the weather is bad and I pace back and forth like this 10-foot <laughs> like area. Um, or I'll march in place. I, I do like to march in place sometimes now uh, just because... We homeschool too, and sometimes the kids are, you know, all spread out, and so it just works easier to just march in place. Um, but I do get the the six miles in, um, but I never had a huge house. So around my bedroom, that was my favorite thing to do: walk from the head of the bed down to the foot of the bed, you know, across, and then back up to the other side of the head of the bed, and then just make that you over and over and over again, or you know, just walk through my house, you know, like walk downstairs and go into the kitchen and then come back upstairs, you know, like I did it all different ways. Um, but I never had a huge house. Uh, number two, I've just started with uh, uh, Osamad, which I've never seen this, one snack and one meal a day, uh, eating two hard boiled eggs at 4 p.m. one hour before leaving the office. Once I've eaten the snack, I start to feel weak and shaky. Then getting home after picking the picking up the kids, I have that weird stress release and peak moment and have been eating 
crisis. Any advice? Love your podcast. Will you get your Q and A's on the podcast? Well, I've never thought of putting the Q and A's on the podcast. Uh, if if people are interested in fat or carbs, so maybe like try to add felt really good after you know at breaking my fast. So uh, let me learn like what's going on here. You know things that help me when control around food or something like that. Um, writing down what's going through my head right now like really what like is there something stressful going on right now that's bugging me and then you know uh trying to work through that uh take action on the thing um okay so uh taking down fat with c-dub uh, and if you guys missed his interview uh check it out uh it, he was really fun to talk to um he's got a great story uh he asked how do you deal with people who think you are starving yourself by eating one meal so many people are uninformed uh, uh thank you for all you do well uh you're welcome and i i think you know people just don't know like it's like a totally foreign concept for a lot of people like most of the time when I say like intermittent fasting, people like give me a blank stare. Like they've never heard of it before. Um, I don't, I think, well, first of all, like I think anyone who's ever eaten with me has no fear that I'm starving myself <laughs> because I eat like I'm a good eater. So I think that was my problem. Uh, I, I'm really good at eating and I love to eat. So um, I don't think anybody who's ever, like, who actually knows me, would think that like, as far as, you know, when I go to people's houses, I eat plenty of food. So no one, no one uh, has his fears. Whenever I have explained it to people, I, I always, I always explain OMAD is one big meal a day. Like I, and I guess I emphasize that it's a big meal. Um, because to me it is, it, it is a big meal. Um, so I think that helps. I don't really converse with a lot of people who like, argue with me about I mean like I guess because I don't really bring it up you know if somebody like I haven't seen in a long time they see me they are they're like oh wow you've lost weight I tell them what I've done I've never had anybody say oh you're starving yourself I mean I've had some people kind of have that like how do you do that like it seems restrictive and I say well it's you know one big meal a day and so I like to be able to do that uh and that's how I explain it um but as far as if it's just like somebody who's just going to be critical, like I just don't engage with those people at all. Like on, I'm saying more like on uh, YouTube comments, you know, if, if it's somebody like that who just says you're starving yourself, uh, you know, I'm not going to argue with you. Those convinced against their will are of the same opinion still. So that's the way I think about that. Um, uh, Doc Cena says, uh, do you ever crave something <laughs> then at OMAD you don't want it? And this is me every day with cereal. So uh, yeah, I, especially in the beginning, I would have these cravings like turkey sandwiches. Like my husband would be eating this turkey sandwich. I would think, oh, like I can't wait <laughs> to, to eat that turkey sandwich. And then like it just, it didn't make sense to have the turkey sandwich at my one meal. So uh, that was one thing. It just didn't make sense. I wouldn't eat it. So I would eat it on cheat day. I would like make a note like, hey, I need to eat that <laughs> on cheat day, uh, which really taught me about so many times things that seem like, oh, that looks so good. It's like when you actually eat the thing, it's like, oh, that wasn't, that really wasn't worth it. You know, I, I, I've learned a lot more about just the way different foods taste. And, um, uh, but yeah, I, I do, I am really careful to always monitor my cravings and really give myself whatever it is I'm craving. Like I, I am very intentional with that. Like if I don't eat it at my OMAD, then I do put it in my, you know, cheat day. Um, just cause I, I think it's good to, to not let those cravings like build up or anything. Um, and then she also asked, or he, I'm not sure. I think uh, she, uh, how do you eat enough on OMAD? I've tried for a week and out of curiosity, counted calories and I can't eat more than a thousand. I might have to do a 22 two instead. And yeah, I mean, you got to experiment with it. Some people do, I guess, have problems eating en enough <laughs> at OMAD. I don't have that problem, but I just don't. Like, I guess I'm a really good eater. Um, and so, yeah, you, you figure out what works for you though. Like OMAD is not the holy grail of weight loss as far as I'm concerned. It's like, it's the thing that works for me. 
because then I don't have to think about it. But there's a lot of different ways you can do intermittent fasting. There's a lot of different ways you can do weight loss in general. And you just find that thing that works for you, the thing that you can do with consistency that you feel good doing and that you're having results with. That does exist. You just have to find what works for you. Um, uh, in Kaposki says, do you get blood work done to see if you're deficient in any area because of OMAD? No, I do not. That's my own personal uh, choice. Uh, but here, here was my, like the way I thought about it. I did educate myself. What does that look like? Cause it was, a, it was kind of like a thing that I wondered about, uh, when it came to OMAD, I thought, huh, you know, like, uh, will you get enough nutrients? And so I educated myself about like, what does, what are the symptoms of nutrient deficiency? And so, uh, I looked those up and I, you know, I'm always oh, monitoring myself to make sure is for years now. Um, and, uh, you know, you can, and I, I looked it up just out of curiosity, you know, the, like, I think LabCorp does like a micro, um, or a mineral vitamin, mineral panel, micronutrient panel. And the prices ranged, you know, from, if you want to be really sad on the thing, like if you're experiencing symptoms, then this is a good test to have. Well, I'm not experiencing symptoms. So that's why I don't do it, but you certainly can. Um, uh, let's see. Emmy renewing my life says, uh, with OMAD or OSOMAD, uh, I, so that was one snack, one meal a day. Uh, when I start eating dinner, even when I have a snack before I crash, I don't even have the strength to finish my plate. I really want to stick with this way of eating. I feel so free during the day. I feel it's helping me break the spiritual stronghold of food. So, uh, first of all, yes, I noticed the same thing as far as, uh, spiritually speaking, I found a lot of benefits with intermittent fasting as far as I had let uh, food, I think, become way too important in my life as far as that was the thing that I looked to for uh, comfort and to relieve stress and to, you know, just add excitement to my day and all this stuff. So, um, yeah, that I, I agree with that. Intermittent fasting taught me, like, you can control yourself around food, which was really good. Um, but I've never, <laughs> I have not experienced, like, feeling like, I think, it, you know, you are still adjusting to it, you know, and um, just, you know, give yourself, like, first of all, make sure that you're going gently with yourself as far as, like, you don't have to go from eating five, six meals a day down to OMAD. Like, you can make it a really gradual transition, uh, and that way you won't feel these negative symptoms that you're feeling. Um but, uh, and then also make sure you're getting enough rest otherwise too. Some people do, you know, have like, they kind of feel sleepy after they, they do eat, break their fast. Uh, some days that happens to me, like today that actually happened to me. I was like, well, I didn't sleep well last night though. And, uh, so, uh, because my, my kids have colds. So it was, you know, one of those kinds of nights. So, uh, like today, I did, you know, OMAD. So when I did finally eat, it was like, oh, wow. You know, like I felt really relaxed after I had my meal. And I, I feel like I could have probably taken a little nap. Um, but I think you will find your body will adjust. Um, choose to stay said, if you don't lose one pound per week, what is the best way uh, to uh, adjust so you do lose the next week? Well, if you can figure out how to make the scale go down one pound at a time consistently every week, then I think you're really lucky. <laughs> like, I think most people, here's what they experience. Sometimes they lose a pound and then other times their weight stays the same. And then other times their weight will go up by two pounds. And then, you know, the next week it's going to go down by three pounds. And it's this, it's a heartbeat basically. And you, it, it's not like a linear thing where it's like, okay, if you do A, B, and C, then without fail, you'll lose a pound a week. Hormonal fluctuations happen. Like my, my weight on average will fluctuate by a pound every single day. So, you know, like it's always going up and down and up and down and up and down. Um, on average, I think it varies by like three pounds. Um, so don't like, like, don't focus so far narrow in on week to week. 
blow, like instead focus on being really consistent for six, eight weeks, and then look back over that six and eight, six to eight week period, and then see how your seven day average is moving. And that's, I think, the best way to really see your weight loss. Don't get in a hurry, though, because some people don't even lose a pound a week. Even when they're being consistent, they lose about a half a pound a week. And some people lose even slower than that. And the most important thing is to find a plan that you can stick with and be really consistent with. And, and, and when I say stick with, I don't mean like, oh, I could do this for two weeks or I could do this for six weeks. You could say, I can see myself doing this for the rest of my, my life. If you find that thing, then that's really, really good. Because like, you have to remember, like, as soon as you get this weight off, you got to maintain it for the rest of your life. So it, it's not just like you got to white knuckle it until you get the weight off because you got to keep the weight off. So um, be really patient. That, that was the biggest thing for me to learn is you got to be really patient. You got to start thinking in terms of months and years. I mean, I remember I remember uh, in. Um, 2016, you know, I, like I said, I had like, I was really close to quitting. And I kept hearing this idea um, of like six weeks of consistency. And that just seemed like so long <laughs> to me. It was like six weeks. Uh, like, you gotta be kidding me. Like, I want to lose five pounds a week. But I finally thought, you know, like, why not? Like, why not instead say, I'm going to stop looking at the week to week numbers. And I'm going to just start saying six and eight weeks of time being really consistent with my plan, really committing to it. And that's when I started to have success. And, but, it, but again, it wasn't like every week without fail, I lost a pound. I'm just saying on average, I lost a pound a week. So again, you know, you got to look at bigger chunks of time for that average to really start to show itself. So just keep going. You're, you're doing great. Just be really patient and, and stretch out your timeline. Uh, Christina Fuseri, I'm pretty sure I pronounced it right. So hopefully, hopefully I did. Um, my question is, how do you feel about intermittent fasting being such a hot diet right now since you talk about not dying and in, buying into diet dogma, which I totally agree with, by the way. I know when I tell people I'm doing intermittent fasting, they tend to think of it as just a fad diet that I will fall off of. So it's so funny, like, because people will talk about it, it's like such a hot diet. Like, again, most of the time I get blank stares when, if I tell somebody I lost weight this certain way, um, sometimes people are familiar with it. Um, I don't watch a lot of YouTube. Um, <laughs> like, I don't watch a lot of other, like, I don't, I don't really watch anything else. I mean, occasionally I might catch a couple of videos here or there of people that I've, uh, you know, interviewed as success stories and stuff. I like to try to keep up with them a little bit. But um, so to me, it's like, I don't even know that it's hot or not. I mean, I think the one I hear of most often is probably keto, but um, uh, as far as, you know, people thinking it's a fad or whatever, like for me, I've been doing it for four years now. So it's, I, to me, that's like, well, that's not a, not a fad. Um, and I can certainly see easily doing it for the rest of my life. I mean, the only reason I would stop is if I, if my life made it so it's like, well, that just won't work anymore, you know, for, for whatever reason. So I'm never going to say never, but I love it. So, and it's like the, been the first thing in my life where it's like, I can do this and maintain a good weight. So I found it as far as I'm concerned. So that's not a fad to me. For me. And, and I mean, and, and that's the thing, like, there are some what people call fad, you know, diets that people stick with for the long term. And so even though it's a fad, it's really more important. Like, what can that one person stick with? You know, some people will be able to stick with keto for the rest of their life. I mean, people might say, well, keto is a fad or carnivore is a fad or vegans a fad. Well, yeah, but there are people who will stick with that for the rest of their lives. Uh, it's just all about what can you stick with. And then I think the most important, like the most like the thing about diet dogma that always gets to me is when people are uh, seem to think like you have to do it their way or there's like no other way that will work. Like, and I think the same thing happens with intermittent fasting. Some people think, well, 
well, that's the only way. And, you know, it's like, no, there's lots of plenty, good, plenty of really good ways to lose weight. Um, so, yeah, I, so again, like I just let my results speak for themselves and for me to just keep going with it. James Westbury asked, uh, good evening. Question. I have, uh, is it okay to get some walking done after I've eaten for the day, such as finishing my eating window at five and getting more of my six miles after? Yeah. I mean, I never had rules about that. It was always just like whenever I could fit them in. And there were some days, like I had basically no steps. Uh, and I started doing them at like 9 p.m., 10 p.m. at night. <laughs> well, it was probably about 9 p.m. in order to get them all in. So, uh, I mean, it, that's just, it, my rule was like, you have to have them done by midnight. And there were times it was like, I didn't really start until late, but I, I still got them in. So uh, Karen McCullough says, um, do you have to walk the six miles a day? to get the results you're getting. I just don't have the time with my job to get that Monday. I don't think it's necessary. I, I think, first of all, because I've, I've met plenty of people, talked with plenty of people who do no exercise at all. They only do intermittent fasting. And I really do think for weight loss, that's the most important thing. The walking six miles a day keeps my head in a really good place. It kept me feeling good, feeling motivated because I was like feeling like I accomplished something. It was something I could control too. Um, I, you know, I would argue probably my app, is increased by walking six miles. So I'm probably eating more than I would otherwise. So I think you'll be fine. Um, uh, you know, and, and you know, if, if you do want to work steps in, you know, there's, uh, you know, people uh, find all sorts of ways to just get them in, you know, kind of sneak them in throughout the day, um, if you're just wanting to walk more, but, uh, but you, it's not required, I don't think. Barbara Griffin asked, hello from Tennessee. Hey, uh, I need to lose 70 pounds. How much can I expect to lose per week in the beginning with OMAD? Fasting 20 hours per day. I'm on day three. Well, welcome to the journey. 70 pounds. You can totally do it. Um, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, I would say in the beginning, you know, maybe a pound a week. And I mean, again, even with OMAD, um, being really consistent, I would say, you know, a pound a week. Shoot for a pound a week be happy with a half a pound a week. But again, you know, focus on consistency. And some people, you know, like everybody's different. Like some are, you know, like OMAD or whatever, they drop some weight and, you know, and maybe it's like a little bit more uh, in w one certain week and then they kind of plateau for a while and then they drop a little bit more. And some people, it's like their body takes several weeks to even get used to. I talked to one woman, it was like six weeks of consistency. She lost nothing. And then all of a sudden the scale started moving. Um, so the most important thing is consistency and just being really patient with the scale, like really, 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 really patient. Um, uh, be patient. That That's that's the biggest piece of advice I could give is just be really, really patient and consistent and you'll get there. You will, like, you, just don't quit. Just don't quit. It's that easy. Um, that, that easy and that hard, but just don't quit. Um, Reshme, uh, Farah said, I tend to get very pressurized if I somehow can't get to my goal by the end of the year. I have 19, 19 pounds left. How should I think? Oh, That's hard. Um, weight loss goals, I think are really, they're different than other goals, right? Because you cannot, not really. I mean, I would say, weight loss is a little different because you want this to be sustainable for the rest of your life. Like you want to get down to that weight, but you want to be able to keep it off. And so then I think it's really important to not do those unsustainable things just so that you can hit your deadline. Um, other things I can, I can say like, Oh yeah. You know, like you just like you, 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 you white knuckle it and you get it done and you, and you, and you push the thing out there. Um, but weight loss, I think it's just a little different. And I, I try to not put deadlines on myself with weight loss. Um, I started to see that that was a bad plan, that it was just like frustrating me. So I, I, in 2016, I was like, I would be thrilled if I could lose a pound a week because that would mean I would, I would be at like kind of a normal BMI. Like, cause you're, you're, you have 19 pounds left. It's, you know, focused on the, why are you wanting to get down? to that weight. Like, well, what is the thing, right? And focus on that. It's not so much, right, about like getting there by the end of the year or what if it's a few months later? Like, why do you want to be there? Focus on the why and then 
and then I think that takes some of the pressure off. And and, and then remind yourself, this is for the rest of your life. Like once you're in, it won't help keep up with your fasting hours. I never did that in between 12 and 8. That's when I'm, when I'm eating, except for on day. Fasting, say about a pound a month in March. Yeah, a little over a pound a month. So, uh, uh, maybe look at during your eating window, are you maybe stress eating and stuff like that? During, during I like to try to make it as easy as possible myself. But because uh, I feel like that's the thing that you can stick with over the long term. Uh, Sherry Noble said, uh, with a prolonged fast, is it okay to drink black coffee? Um, you know, I it depends on what your goals are. I did a prolonged fast, a, a five day fast uh, for the possible cancer prevention benefits. So um, I, I felt like it was good. it really depends on what your goals are. I would say it's fine. You know, but that's just me. Tom Brokaw. Well, hello, Tom Brokaw. Uh, I had a vertical sleep surgery. Omed will not uh, give me enough calories in one meal as I can only do smaller portions. So I do an 18-6 or a 19-5 uh, to get, uh, for two meals to get calories in. What are your thoughts? I think that's fantastic. I think, uh, I, again, I don't think Omad is like the be all end all. I think it's just like whatever works for you. If a 19-5 gets you your calories in and you're having results, I think that's fantastic. I have no, I, I think it'll be great. I, I have plenty of people have had great success with a 16-8 or even calories and or do low carb. No, and no, I don't, <laughs> I don't, count, counting calories drives me crazy. I know some people have great results with it. It just drives me nuts uh, personally. And low carb, no, because I love bread and pasta and I, you know, love ice cream and cheesecake and all the, all the food. I love all the food. So no, I don't do low carb because it's not sustainable for me. I've done it in the past. Like when I was a kid, I did some low carb stuff. I hated it. Uh, Diana S said, hello, Kayla. Uh, my question is, do you believe your method will work, will work for an older woman with an older metabolism? Do you know anyone in their 60s or 70s who have been successful with your method? Thanks. Yes, I do believe it will work for you. And yes, I have had people in their 60s and 70s tell me that they've done this and it works for them. Uh, Henrietta would be one. Uh, she comments a lot on the channel um, in the comments section. Um, I've had people on my website also uh, tell me that, that you know, again, like they're in their, their 70s doing this, having results. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I can't remember. Jay, do you remember if Joe Holman, is he, how old is he? He might be in his 50s. He's yeah. in his 50s. And Jim's in his 50s, yeah. right? So we've yeah, had a lot of people in their 50s also uh, uh, that I've interviewed and that have done great. Um, but yes, it does work. It just, you know, if your metabolism is a little slower, it's going to take a little bit longer. So, but yes, you can do this. Uh, Felicia uh, Tru Trujillo says, Kayla, how do you deal with the feeling of, I guess it is called ketosis. My heart makes my heart beat fast and I'm unable to sleep. Oh, okay. So fast and being unable to sleep when he was going through an extended fast. Um, so I'm assuming this is kind of the same thing as far as what you're talking about, those symptoms. Um, again, I've never dealt with that. I, I um, see, and I'm thinking if I'm remembering correctly, I think you're keto, so you're not eating carbs. So um, I don't know. Again, I eat a lot of the carbs and I just don't experience those kinds of symptoms. Um, I would definitely get it checked out by a doctor if, I mean, like that, cause that just seems, I mean, I would be scared if my heart was beating too fast, um, and you're not able to sleep. Like you want to be able to sleep and you want your heart to be, you know, beating at, at the right <laughs> speed. So, um, uh, I would say talk to a doctor, um, you know, and, and because especially if, you know, maybe you're doing keto because of blood sugar thing. So, um, yeah, I've, I've not experienced it, so I really can't help there. So, um, sorry that I can't be more helpful on the last question, but, um, thank you guys so much for joining. Uh, it's already nine twelve. man, that hour flew by. Uh, thank you for all the really excellent questions. I appreciate you guys being here. I hope it was helpful. Um, if you're on your weight loss journey right now and you're, you know, like you're, you're having trouble, just keep going, just never, ever quit. And you'll get exactly where you want to be. You really will. So uh, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next week, uh, 8 p.m. Wednesday.